I only have one slide, so I don't have to use that. Uh, my name's Clayton, and I'm really honored to be here. It's wonderful to see so many people engaged in this work, which was instrumental in my life. Uh, my mediation and training began in uh, Miss Prigian's first grade class, as many of our lessons do. I remember she had a tape rug. It was a brown rug, and there was a green circle that we would sit in in a circle and, and part of that curriculum at that early age, it wasn't formal mediation training, but we were instructed in listening. You know, so often we celebrate the first words and the first sentence and the first swear word and these things, but rarely are we, you know, educated formally in listening. And this was luckily a part of my grammar school education. And what this looked like was we would sit together and two people would come to the center of the circle and uh, it was called attentive listening. And basically, you know, there'd be a topic. I remember my first one was with a student named Ruben Lawrence. I mean, this education is so intrinsic in my life that I can remember even that early age. And we just basically listened to each other tell how we got to school that day. Nothing too controversial, but I think I had gotten a ride and Ruben taking the bus and then we had to identify what was different what might have been challenging for that individual. And again, the educators out there, I just have to say, and, I, and I'll talk more about my formal mediation training, is this foundational listening training, to me, needs to be an intrinsic part of grammar school education. We need to teach young people how to listen because then it makes the mediation process actually so much more functional. And I think for me, becoming a mediator and going through mediations it was my ability to listen um, that was taught. It was a learned skill uh, beyond just observing. I think a lot of us get our education from our families. In my family, I would have been a very dangerous proposition because we were Italian and generally the person who uh, you know, got the point across spoke the loudest. <laughs> and I think we're seeing the results of that now a lot today in our political climate. So that was, there was not a, a peer mediation program in my elementary school, but I do feel the curriculum that was you know, aside from the academic cornerstones of mathematics and English, there was this component of listening and dialoguing, which was just very important later on. When I got to John Adams Middle School, I, I matriculated through the Santa Monica Unified School District. Uh, I um, read about the mediation, and of course my inspiration was I got in this class. I got to get this training and get out of the standard classroom. So I signed up, and the same thing, I went through a very similar process that you just heard about, um, I was interviewed by uh, some faculty and by other peer mediated students that were eighth graders and I was a sixth grader. And I just really wanted to get in the program because I knew I could miss some classes and I ended up being accepted. I shared that with them too. I said, that's a primary motivator. But, um, uh, what I remember about the training was once I was accepted, uh, we were trained for about 35 hours, I think over the course, I think there was two um, two day sessions over the course of two weeks. So we were pulled out of our classes and uh, we did the training with professional mediators from a, a service that might have transformed into something, but I think it was called Dispute Resolution Services and it was a group of mediators in Santa Monica. And uh, the training, you know, there was all these hypothetical situations and we'd be walked through to see the adults do it and uh, eventually we were you know, certified as mediators and confidentiality. A lot of the things you just heard were very similar to my experience. And uh, we did have to make up the coursework that we did miss. So, you know, the missed class actually turned into extra work. Right. But um, I think what's important for me to share about that experience and what also I think as educators, we really need to think about this new generation of people coming up is not only did I learn the skill in mediation, but immediately I was put to task to utilize the information. And I think, I don't know how much education has changed since I was in school, but I think to me that's what was so impactful for this information is that not only was it a new skill set and a very important skill set, but because we the onus was on us to utilize this skill set, it did make us feel important. It did make us feel like we had uh, an intrinsic value. And I would really see it with the people that mediated. Again, there was always this either you could, I, at John Adams Middle School, you could choose mediation over detention, so it became a real sort of uh, motivator for students to come in, but I think what would happen in that setting 
was uh, uh, not only were we empowered as, as students to mediate, but the students who were in conflict were empowered to almost discipline themselves. So the part of our process too was like, how are we gonna prevent this from happening in the future? Rather than the fight, what agreements can we make today that we can walk away from? And it was kind of like a contract, like just like any sort of mediation you do today over you know, a, a legal issue. And then that was filed into the uh, <clears throat> student's personal file. And if the issue came up again, then there was a more severe consequence. Maybe they couldn't do mediation again. If the same um, issue came up that they had contractually obligated themselves to not do again. Um, but I don't think, I don't know the numbers on this, but it feels to me like that, that because the students were kind of in charge of their own destiny in that way, they too felt empowered by the whole pro uh, process. Um, my mediation training, I went all the way through the, the, the program, continued in the high school. And, um, you know, mediation really got me interested in the other as a concept. And uh, I think that early training gave me a lens. I like to say to kind of look at things that were different growing up in LA, I had a multicultural background. And then when I got to university, um, I studied cultural anthropology, which was also kind of this lens that you wear to experience the other, where you don't necessarily um, put your own socialization in a hierarchical order. Well, I did it this way, so, you know, it's really devastated the world through uh, colonialization and these things. Um, you know, I think mediation is the balm that we can really begin to uh, transform that. And uh, currently I work as a musician. I was in the band for six years, which was a daily meditation. You have six really engaged artists who are highly emotional people. And when you're in that creative process, um, it can get explosive because people are, are maybe revealing, like you may have an idea, you worked on it all last night, you come into the rehearsal studio, and like immediately so I'm just like, that's terrible. And you know, you create this conflict with people that need to work together, that need to creatively, innovatively work together, but they're constantly on edge, you know, and sometimes that edge. So I'm very grateful for mediation. I feel like it's a skill I use every day on the best of days. I still struggle on the 405 to really just be like, yeah. <laughs> where I'm from. Uh, breathe. Yeah, breathe. Um, but, uh, I, I'm a product of this program, and um, I'm grateful beyond beyond just the practical aspects, I think. Um, it's just so important, because I think what we teach these kids as mediators should become the model for future education, and how we actually update the educational models that a lot of them are still in place from Victorian era or early industrialization era. Um, I mean, really, as we reframe our ideas about education and how we're going to engage the future, um, I think this mediation is a, a winning example of how we can really affect positively the youth. And um, I'd like to, if anyone has questions, I think that's gonna be more effective. Um, so, to me it seems like this sort of concept of mediation is so Yeah. Um, so as you explored the world and met with different people that perhaps didn't have the same sort of culture, how were you able to bring your skill set to different cultures and were you able to impact change through those experiences? I would say again that what, what really we need to talk about in the curriculum is listening. It's such a powerful skill to just give someone space. Um, especially I've traveled a lot. I'm, I love travel. I think it's one of the best things we can do to get into another culture. And then coming home, especially from that, we really see the differences in our own culture. But for me, it's just being silent, holding space for someone and letting them share. And especially in the, in the context of conflict, you know, a lot of times we're so engaged in how we were wrong that just kind of flipping the script for one second and hearing where someone else is coming from can, can open that door of empathy in a way that we didn't even know was there. It's like, wow, I never even saw your position. I never even considered your position was even a position a person could have. And it could be something very simple like that. And I, I really do believe that just begins with training. And the good thing about a young mind is it's so pliable and we can kind of insert these like positive programs in there at a young age, like I did in first grade, that become cornerstones for how we function as an adult. As a student uh, peer mediator, how many mediations did you uh, facilitate? 
I have hundreds, I'd say. By the time I was done through middle wow. school and through high school, hundreds. Yeah, and, then, and I became a more, I mean, because also in the program, the, the students could request mediators. Mm -hmm. And I think just as, as you have more success and people say like, oh, this worked really well, or, you know, this guy was good. Or, and, and the same thing, that confidentiality was really expressed. We would also lose our seat as mediators. Um, I think just, you know, you kind of build up a trust like any occupation people begin to see. So I, I did a lot. And the issue that you brought up earlier about in, in, in high school, obviously people's issues become more complex than you bullied me or, you know, we got in a fight or we didn't see eye to eye over this thing. And, you know, a lot of times adults would step in a lot of times because, you know, the issues people are facing are just a lot more serious. But still, I feel like what the mediation did in high school, which it didn't do in middle school, is that it opened the door to those students. Maybe would have never brought those issues and been served in any way because there just wasn't that space. You know, if you go to an adult, I mean, we're already seeing with the Me Too movement how difficult it is for adults to share something about sexual abuse or battery. So for a student to have to go to an administrator, maybe they already don't enjoy or have some sort of authoritarian relationship, I think the peer mediation program hopefully um, opened the door to them getting help. And, um, as a student peer mediator, did you see any uh, trends or any patterns of, of the types of mediations that you would do? You know, we always knew there was always phony ones where people, again, were trying to get out of class. And you could always know right away that, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you just could see it because they're kind of like, even as they're telling, because, you know, we'd always lay ground rules. And that that's also was a really winning part of our success was we let the people kind of come to common ground. Um, on how we were going to facilitate the uh, mediation. Like, are we going to, you know, we'll have a policy or A, we're only going to talk to the uh, mediator or B, we're going to talk to each other, but there's going to be a, like a, you know, 100% no interruption clause, we can't interrupt each other, we're going to give, or it's timed, i got five minutes to tell them. And kind of in that opening, when they'd start telling, you'd see they're just kind of laughing. And then, you know, we'd probably, we would honor the process, but we'd wrap it up pretty quick. You know what I mean? We try to get that done right away. Um, but uh, no, the 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 I, I even mediated. Um, grateful to the teacher, it wasn't always way, but I even mediated a conflict between a student and a teacher, and that was really cool because again, you got to understand as the mediator now you're wielding some power over an actual teacher, or not power, but at least in the sense you're helping an adult come to some resolution with the student. And that was really, really amazing for me, Wait, personally. I think we're gonna have to um, yeah, sure. get back to this. Thank you. Of course, yeah, and thank you all for being here.